Well, the government has identified Technical as well as Vocational Training Institute as a key enabler of economic growth as well as an employment reduction. And in the last two or three years, the government has put a lot of emphasis on developing this subsector. What are the challenges and what is the way forward? Joining us tonight on Inside Government is Dr. Kavit Desai. He's the Principal Secretary in charge of uh, State Department for Vocational as well as Technical Training. He's joining us tonight here to explain us more. Thank you so very much, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. I mean, two years, you have been, almost two years you have been in, in office. Uh, what would you say has been the biggest achievement so far? I think that these are very exciting times as... Um, as a, a principal secretary, I'm involved in not only policy advisory, but also technically the chief executive officer for the State Department and uh, in many ways involved in troubleshooting and finding solutions on a day-to-day -day basis. And as far as the reforms are concerned to date, we stand at a very unique and a very exciting time because of uh, the relevance of TIVIT and primarily because of the national vision, you know, the Big Four agenda, which uh, requires us uh, to have the necessary human capital development to achieve all the th four different agendas of the Big Four, and the fact that um, TIVIT plays a significant role. But what we're trying to do here at the national level is to ensure that we achieve and arrive at a fit-for-purpose national TIVIT system, which becomes the backbone of um, development of human capital development. This will then transition and um, promote the highest level of productivity gains, innovation gains, efficiency gains for not only the productive sector, the social sector as well as the public sector. TIVIT skills cut across the entire fabric of uh, development. The skills and competencies are required in order to achieve productivity gains and innovation gains and efficiency gains. And so towards that aim, what we're doing nationally is to uh, ensure that we're able to, as, a, as part of our agenda, promote the greatest level of TIVIT penetration within the country. We're focusing, as part of one of our policies, on promoting greater access. And this means that we are, we are um, establishing technical vocational training institutions in each constituency. Now, the whole objective of this is to ensure that skills and competencies are accessible by all. After all, we have one of the greatest resources, you know, our youth, and uh, in order for us to fully utilize their energy, their curiosity, their creativity, mm -hmm. their resourcefulness, access to technical vocational training institutions are absolutely critical, and therefore building one in each constituency as part of the government policy is absolutely critical. To date, we have 173 and 30 further institutions have been approved in the last uh, budget. And so we'll continually build these institutions in each constituency with a view of ensuring that we are able to promote that access to young women and men. But it's also as part of our development capacity and to ensure that we promote the highest level of equity in TIVIT, a further policy which includes capitation for young uh, women and men who uh, would like to participate in skills development has also been provided and this then caters for low-income families as well as uh, those that um, contextually may not be able to afford TIVIT and would like to gain a skill, be competent mm -hmm. and then be promoted into development as far as uh, uh, gainful employment and self-employment. So I'd say that the, these two policies have been instrumental in promoting greater access and to date the outcome has been in today's enrollment terms 270,000 students have enrolled in TIVIT in and uh, th this has been a 190 percent increase over the last uh, one and a half years and we look forward to a further promising 400,000 enrollment in May, which uh, then sets us on a on a great course at a national level to ensure that at least, you know, um, a, a significant number of our population is being trained and skilled, mm. and that would then be the backbone for our development. We're focusing on a three-point agenda to not only rebrand TIVIT, but to make sure that it's fit for purpose. And when we mean fit for purpose, we expect TIVIT to do a lot more than it's doing 
currently. You know, it's not only providing skills to young women and men who finish higher education, but but also is accessible by students throughout their for the rest of their life. We have students enrolling at much later years of their um, professional life, you know, 30, 40, picking up a skill and competency. And so TIVIT has to become part and parcel of one's um, transformation. But it's also there to promote technology transfer, assessment of prior experience. This is yet another achievement as far as policy is concerned. And um, it's there to find ways in which we create new enterprises, provide extension services, and focus on specialized value chains of the big four. If it's um, textiles from seed to fashion, if it's dairy processing from inputs to all the different areas of ice cream and yogurt and dried milk and so on. So the strategy is to ensure that we're able to create these centers of excellence as part of the agenda. It's also to focus on promoting greater quality and governance of these institutions, working closely with the small medium enterprise sector because of the potential linkage contributions we have in their productivity gains and innovation gains and efficiency gains, addressing the values that we're trying to achieve as the ministry with respect to promoting greater access, equity, quality and relevance of TIVIT. And so these are the key areas that we're focusing on in order to lift the potential of TIVIT and thereby not only ensure that it becomes attractive to young people but informs um, young people of the potential they have in terms of being gainfully employed and self-employed and giving them different alternatives. In all of this, w as a key policy, we've, we are now implementing competency-based education training. Now what this does is ensures that whatever we train at is to international standards. So whether it's plumbing or painting and so on, the standards and quality determine the outcome. These have to be measurable and to international level, fur further promoting greater opportunities for young women and men to, to not only work in Kenya but abroad. We have created an environment whereby you know, people are in hot pursuit of degrees and especially in a, a humanity uh, studies. But what are we doing to ensure that uh, we make technical courses, you know, more appealing to young people uh, and we ensure that uh, they are employable at the end of the day. The government plays a significant role in encouraging young women and men to uh, participate in these technical and vocational courses. We do this through competitions, there's several competitions, one on robotics, the other on uh, science and technology called the Young Scientist Kenya initiative. We have one on, on uh, machining and all of these competitions are there with a view of encouraging young people and most importantly recognizing their talent, you know, their, um, their natural traits of curiosity, creativity and resourcefulness. It's from this phase that we then provide pathways, academic pathways to universities as well as um, non-academic pathways through TIVIT institutions. And in all of this, we've ensured that there's a great flexibility so that just in case, in the context of one's life, while they didn't do very well in academics, they can still do very well in TIVIT and then once again rejoin academics. Mm -hmm. And so, per se, there's no competition between um, universities and TIVIT institutions. Universities focus on academic outcomes, TIVIT focus on skills and competencies. Both are equally required in our national system. And further to that, as we focus on our national vision of the Big Four agenda, it gives us a greater purpose towards uh, outcomes of self-employment and gainful employment. And all of this is part of the value chain that the government has provided so that young women and men can be excited about their future and um, be involved and ensure that all of this is accessible. It's for this reason when we invest in TIVIT institutions in the remotest part of this country, we invest in world-class technology. If I take you to parts of uh, um, um, the country, I recently visited Konoin, where we set up an entire food processing and beverage 
cottage industry within the Tivit Institution, which looks at the entire value chain of dairy and food processing, um, juices, etc., and so on. And it does this from the very start, you know, being able to measure the inputs, you know, with respect to nutritional content, the ability to assess uh, chemistry in the materials, the ability to achieve and understand the microbiology of inputs and then measures this throughout the entire process from the inputs being processed to the actual value addition process. And we, we have also seen it in the past you know, whereby government you know, elevating um, te technical colleges or, or, or polytechnic, polytechnics if you like it, if you like it and that one of them was uh, the Nairobi Polytechnic, uh, Mombasa Polytechnic into fully fledged universities. And this was seen as a move hacking, you know, to killing the technical industry. Uh, do you think this was a, a move in the right direction? We've learnt uh, our lesson from this. When we look at other countries, first world countries like China and um, India and Korea, they, without uh, much thought, you know, they, they, they've, well, th with much thought and with w much determination, they put at least 80% of their population in Tivit and only you know between 10 and 20% go to university education why is that because the backbone of uh, social development economic development and the public sector development are these uh, vocational and technical skills and what I mean by that is artisans craftsmen master craftsmen technicians and technologists we need to re-establish that culture we had it in, in the period in the 70s it eroded into this transition to universities but once again the government is making a tremendous effort to ensure that we revive this and this time round we would like to promote the highest level of standards ensure that we benchmark internationally and make a system that is highly inclusive so that even in the future this system is um, highly regarded cherished and supported you know, as it grows mm -hmm. nationally. And, and the two institutions that I have just uh, mentioned, that is, um, uh, you know, Kenya Polytechnic and, um, you know, Mombasa Polytechnic, you know, were seen as model uh, uh, technical institutions in the country. But with their elevation to university uh, 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 status, are we, do we have plans, you know, to create other, uh, other vocational training uh, uh, models in the country? We currently have 11 polytechnics and we have um, some 160 TVCs, Technical Vocational Centers, TTIs. We have 900 VTCs. We work on this basis that artisan courses and craftsmen are done in VTCs. Master craftsmen, technician and uh, courses are done in technical training institutes and TVCs and technologist courses are, are now going to be carried out in polytechnics. Now this is the thinking that the entire value chain then becomes essential to young, young people you know progressing in a systematic way and the credits are then recognized at a national level called the National Qualifications Framework which enables them to move vertically from artisan to technologist or horizontally to once again rejoin academic universities and so on. So there is much hope that you know we'll once again revive this entire sector. We will ensure that as these institutions increase in enrollment, for example if a TVC increases in enrollment above 7,000, 8,000, then it's possible that depending on the geographical location that we will consider it to be a national polytechnic. We, we're about to do the same just now for Nyandara Technical Training Institute which now will become a polytechnic. So that polytechnic culture where we focus on skills and competencies which are modular, which enable students to learn in a flexible manner throughout their life, which uh, help them accumulate skills and competencies, will be a permeated through the entire national system with a view of once again regaining that culture of Tivit and uh, promoting it to its uh, rightful role. But at this particular moment we're focusing on ensuring that they become fit for purpose and we're working 
and determined to achieve that. When you look at the education's um, uh, strategy paper for 2014-2018, I mean, it indicated that uh, we had a shortage of about uh, 90,000 uh, technicians and 400,000 uh, uh, artisans. Uh, since then, have we seen any improvement or the situation is becoming worse by the day? We are achieving quite a lot. Uh, the, the gains in TIVIT are incredible at 190 percent enrollment at 270,000 and the potential capacity exists in the range of around 350,000 students in addition to the 270. We have been reaching out to communities and the counties and various individuals and leadership and so on to, to promote greater awareness for young people to uh, enroll in TIVIT institutions. We have another 150,000 students enrolled in VTCs where the government as part of its policy provides conditional grants to uh, enable enrollment and so we have a fairly large population of young women and men now being enrolled and uh, th this will not only benefit the country because of all the ongoing development works as well as the potential we have but most importantly you know it'll also enable us to contribute as a natural resource to the rest of the world so thereby training for opportunities in uh, Europe which is aging or Japan uh, Canada or other parts of the continent where skilled and competent people will be required well, if you talk to Institute of Quantitative Surveyors of Kenya they will tell you that um, uh, in, in any construction, uh, the cost of labor to building is about 25 percent uh, and it used to be around uh, 20 percent about uh, seven, ten years ago. And this is making you know, the construction industry in Kenya to be a bit expensive. And this is likely to have an impact on the Big Four agenda on affordable housing. How do we plan to address this? It's not only in the construction sector. If you look at the average uh, productivity yields of a wheat farm or a corn farm, you know, it's, it's you know, w one third of international standards. And this is the uh, challenge we have, you know, if, we, if we're not able to attain the necessary technology transfer, innovation and productivity in all aspects of our lives, then it becomes incredibly difficult to be competitive. In fact, um, TIVID is a function of uh, competitiveness and enterprise creation and efficiency. And so the efforts here are to ensure that we modernize these technical vocational training institutions to the extent that the equipment and technology is a mirror image to world-class technology, that we train our trainers to the highest level possible. As part of our policy, it's one of the reasons why we moved our trainers from the Teacher Service Commission to the Public Service Commission to create a new scheme so that they're able to be incentivized for the many different duties that they have and to ensure that our training is done to international standards that will be a huge contributor and uh, to our productivity gains and I think that it's one of those quick wins that we can achieve far quicker than all other areas and uh, immediately start showing results. TIVIT trainings are very short courses they they start you know they start from three months to one year they can go on to diploma which will take two two years but the point here is that within three to six months to twelve months as soon as you graduate from these certificate courses you're able you're skilled enough to engage the market and that then contributes not only to our tax base but most importantly it contributes to the over overwhelming productivity challenge that we have and I think that that is why, and this is precisely why TIVIT really is the backbone for social and pub public sector as well as um, economic development. But it also contributes greatly to some of the other concerns we have as um, men and women of this country, for example, social issues like security. When we empower young people with skills, then they have no time for vices like drugs and uh, other ill vices of alcohol and so on. You know, in a country whereby about 45% uh, of all uh, uh, TVET graduates, you know, they go into self-employment, uh, whereas uh, about 12% of them, you know, they proceed to, to pursue um, uh, uh, higher education. 
do what, what follow through measures you know have we put in place to ensure that uh, the 45 percent who venture into you know into self employment you know they remain afloat as business in a country whereby uh, uh, almost 60 uh, percent of all you, you, you know, new businesses, uh, you know, will, will, will collapse before their fifth birthday. The big, big idea we have really is that we create a nexus between TIVIT institutions and these TIVIT clusters that we have and uh, the MSME sector, which is a sleeping giant and has phenomenal potential in terms of not only the sustainability but the further transformation of, of uh, business in this country. And towards that aim, we are focusing on creating these centers of excellence that not only have all these outcomes of technology transfer and incubation and enterprise creation and science, technology and innovation and a close linkage to county integrated development plans, but also specifically to focus on outcomes of policy issues, outcomes of standards, looking at the entire ecosystem of uh, business at this low level. Now we're seeing l tremendous gains. If I take you to RIAT, Technical Training Institute. They're working closely with all the fish farmers in the area, helping them across the entire value chain. The era of, um, you know, artificial intelligence and uh, and the automation. Uh, what is the role of um, TVET, you know, going forward? And are we equipping our our young people with 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 courses or with knowledge and skills, you know, that is going to outlive their generation? Well, you know, we, we're in the fourth cycle of uh, manufacturing. The first was all about, you know, heavy steam and power. The second was, and, and, and in, the, in those days, you know, steam drove pulleys, pulleys drove machines, machines then made bits and pieces through belts and so on. Then came, you know, the, the phase, the second phase where they focused on assembly and structured assembly. The third phase was on automation. The fourth phase, as you mentioned, is on robotics, artificial intelligence, and um, uh, you know, data, etc., analytics, etc., and so on. In all, the, in all the first three phases, we merely used the technology. We were not part of the blueprint as Kenyans. In the fourth phase, what we're determined to do is to ensure that we understand the, the standards to skills, because that's where we're able to then transition into developing the technology and being part and parcel of localizing it from uh, for our contextual view. And, th and that is the reason why we put so much emphasis on competency-based education training because that enables us to train to standards, standards that are measurable with greater tolerances and that enables us to take an idea to a product because you, you can have an idea but if you're not skilled enough to machine a part then that idea is only an idea. But if you have the idea, you're skilled and competent to exacting tolerances, you can transform it. And that's our strategy for Industry 4. It's all about standards, it's all about skills and competencies, and it's all about trying to localize uh, to our natural context so that we're part and parcel of this mm -hmm. international uh, challenge and opportunity. Dr. Terry, as we come to the end of this interview, uh, Tell me this, you know, we have entered the, the, what is being referred to as the critical stage uh, or the, the critical decade of Vision 2030. We are now about 10 years to, uh, before we can look back and say we achieved Vision 2030 or we missed the boat by the river. What is going to be the role of TVET in helping this country achieve Vision 2030? On the social and economic pillar, it's extensive. It's actually the backbone. It's the backbone for various reasons because the whole outcome of Vision 2030 is to, to bring prosperity to the common man and woman. There may be many different opportunities occurring throughout the country or even in the close locality of a family. But if you're not trained and skilled and competent, you can't access opportunity, whether it's uh, building a runway for the airport or... or um, trying to benefit from value addition from crop production and so on. So the whole potential lies in our ability to embrace TIVIT as a country, as a nation. And why I say embrace is because it, TIVIT, unlike other institutional structures, depends on inclusivity, it depends on involvement, it depends on 
at the governance of uh, TIV institutions. It requires industrialists to sit on the board. It requires um, local leaders as well as um, technologists, business people to look into the fiduciary and the governance role. At the level of training, it requires industry involvement in assessment. No longer are we going to assess purely from an academic side. It will be in close collaboration with industry. So industry has to come forward. Professionals have to come forward. It in requires industry to play a role in terms of uh, further preparation of uh, student curriculum and standards so that we're in absolute harmony with what's required externally. And all of this requires inclusivity to ensure that you know that the, the greatest efficiency is achieved towards um, promoting self-employment and gainful employment and this indeed requires the support and the collective effort of all all stakeholders to make that impact and I think that this is strategically the f the most efficient way to um, achieve our goals in terms of vision 2030 because then ultimately in the ten years to come will have built a network of TIVIT institutions. These institutions will be populated by the youth that uh, have not been to academic institutions, those that uh, have uh, been through academic institutions and those that are professional as far as continuous professional development. What will that do? It'll, it'll promote the highest level of skill and competency at all levels and this in in, in turn will lead to the ability for us to have greater human capital development, ensure that you know, we're more competitive and that we're enterprise creation concentric. This will be the basis, this will be the backbone for Vision 2030 to neatly achieve its uh, goals and targets. And I think that this collective spirit will also go a long way in other endeavours, in other practical and pragmatic ways in which we're able to solve other issues with respect to the broader aspects of not only our environment but also our social challenges mm -hmm. and our ec economic challenges and I believe that this really has a lot to do with an inclusive system, a highly collective system and a system that you know ensures that we keep uh, focusing on one hand on the opportunity of the big four but most importantly the invaluable resource we have in our youth which um, can drive this entire uh, pathway towards prosperity. Dr. Ari, thank you so very much thank indeed you. for your time. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. What well, we, we have been discussing uh, the role of, um, of vocational and technical training institutes, you know, on ensuring the country becomes number one an economic powerhouse and we reduce unemployment, which is one of the highest in the region at about 35% of the population. And we have been discussing this with the peers in charge of uh, 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 technical as well as vocational training, Dr. Uh, Kevin Desai. You have been watching Inside Government. My name is O'Brien Kimani. Thank you very much for your time. Have a good night.